after I had my son, um, I, I put on weight. I didn't lose any of my pregnancy weight. In fact, I probably gained okay. um, from my pre-pregnancy weight. I think I gained another 30 kilos at least. I was really struggling with losing that. And because, because I had gained so much weight, just struggling with self-confidence, even just little sort of things like being able to enjoy my son, which should, you know, you kind of expect that to come naturally to a mother. And I tried a few different things and it just seems like no matter what I tried, I failed at everything I did. Literally felt like a big fat failure. <laughs> if I can put it like that and because I had failed so often struggling um to sort of I don't know believe that I could actually change at one of my um antenatal appointments I was 90 kilos you know how like it's expected that you'll gain a few kilos during pregnancy I gained more than what was expected I probably put on at least 15 kilos Mm. um and that's I don't think that that's not really reasonable pregnancy weight gain <laughs> and it just didn't come off yeah. after I had him it stuck yeah. and my weight just increased the thing with mum guilt getting yeah. to the end of the day being so exhausted and throughout the day that you sort of you snap at your kids um mm-hmm. for no good reason simply then other than you're exhausted and just sort of don't really know what else to do and you snap at your kids and then you get to the end of the day and you sort of your brain doesn't wind down and you end up mulling all these things over in your head and start to feel guilty and um yeah then the tears kind of come and I'm a bad mum and (laughs) it all just so I was struggling with that um more often than not wouldn't have the energy to do my cleanup but it was kind of chaos because then it'd go to trying to get my son ready for bed and after a long day when he doesn't want to cooperate and he doesn't want to go down and you're tired, it just all builds up mm. and yeah, stressed. Um, yep. Having to sort of sit in his room with him for a few hours until he went to sleep. And while he was doing that, usually on my phone, tired, exhausted. Mm. You know, if he had come up and wanted to play, no, I wouldn't have wanted to play with him. I probably would have said, go and get a book or something. Like, yeah. give me five minutes, to leave, leave me alone sort of thing. I'm tired. Yeah. And that right there, that's, that's, that, was, that was your thing. I remember it. Clear as day. Yeah. In your application uh, is what kind of, it was like, all right, this, this girl, she, she's serious because she, she snaps. And I want you to um, know that, is that that's the snapping point. Uh, and mm. you've and you've used that to get to where you are now. Uh, mm. You'll have more snapping points as you go along, and yeah. with every snapping point, your standards rise. So I'm I'm guessing right now, um, you wouldn't accept those standards that you're accepting six months ago in your life now. No way. So tell me a little bit about what what you're experiencing now. How do you feel now? Um, I mean, I still have my days and I mean I guess it's just part of motherhood you still yeah. stop at your kids sometimes but yeah. it's usually for a good reason now <laughs> it's not just sort of off the cuff I'm tired you're getting on my nerves um it's it's a lot more bedtimes especially are a lot more relaxed and I've got that wind down time that buffer between what I'm doing and bedtime um and not having to, I guess, prepare that meal every single night means that my cleanup afterwards is easier. It's just bedtimes are a lot smoother. And so I can go to bed, get a good rest, um, wake in the morning refreshed. It's mm-hmm. not nice for anyone when mum wakes up cranky. Um, nobody's day goes smooth. <laughs> Um, and it just all flows on from there. You wake up in the morning, you can refresh, you can do what you need to. Um, you've got the energy. Um, yeah, it's a big difference to where I was six months ago. What advice would you have for a mum sitting there on the fence right now, not whether knowing what to do next? Um, I guess if... If that mum is as sceptical as I was, there's probably not a lot you can say to try and convince them. Just 
um, it's not it's not just another program like so many others where they kind of go thanks we've got your money here's your program good luck it's it's very much a I guess my experience of it was it's very much a you know thanks thanks for choosing us um, and you get the information when you need it um, and it's a this is what we're going to try and achieve here let me help you through it um, and when you're stuck um, yeah let me help um, it's not a it's not a you sort of vaguely need to go in that direction and good luck finding your destination it's a mm. Uh, I guess a guided tour, if you like, <laughs> um, and your support is there every step of the way. Um, but you need to be willing and honest enough with yourself to admit when you need help and to not cover things up. Um, I was skeptical. Um, it didn't. I didn't think it suited my budget. Um, um, but it's, I guess, uh, I guess, like you said, I was kind of at the end of my rope. I didn't feel that I had any other options. I, like, I had tried so many things before and I needed that accountability. And I even said to my husband, like, I need professional help. Um, so instead of looking at it, I guess, as, um, this is just, um, sort of as a one-off payment, even though like it is, it's an investment. Um, and like you invest in things that are good. Um, and I firmly believe, and I would tell anybody this, um, investing money um, into the Fit Mom method and into working with yourself, um, that's, that's investing, like investing that time into yourself. That's an investment in your family. It's an investment in your kids and your spouse, your partner, um, anyone else you come into contact um, day after day. And um, I guess the other thing about investments is they're long-term and you're not just given something that's gonna last you um, sort of, you know, three or four years and then maybe fall by the wayside. It's you given what you need to get you really through life. Um, living a healthy lifestyle. I mean, can you really put a price tag on that? It's, um, you know, a little investment now has big payoffs in the future. And how long, I, and I guess the other thing is, you know, how long can you really put it off for? Because another six months, 12 months down the track, your circumstances might be a lot different. You know, why not do it now? Um, yeah, I guess, maybe, is what I would say. <laughs> that's, a, that's amazing. Um, hey, if you want to join us, we start on the 14th of Jan. So I'll put a link in the comments section um, below. Uh, before I let you go, what's next for you? Do you know what's the next goal, target? What are we going for? Um, so I'm yet to reach um, my 10 kilo target, but... Um, my next goal in terms of weight loss is I'd like to lose another 10 in the next six months. But yep. um, another goal that I've got is just to, I guess, continue working on my routines and my rituals and to optimise them, I guess, mm -hmm. and make sure that I can sort of commit to actually putting them into action because I like what I've got on paper, but mm -hmm. um it's a different story when it comes to me actually doing it, especially my exercise. So I'm keen to put that into action because mm. I know that it's going to get me more results. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, no doubt you'll hit your 10 kilo weight loss within the week because you're only a tiny, tiny little bit off. And if you have that mindset moving forward, you're going to continue to just uh, improve beyond measure. I think you'll get to this time next year and you're not going to recognize yourself. You're not yeah. going to recognize yourself, um, not only physically, but mentally. You're going to be, yeah, um, so much mentally tougher. Uh, you already are compared to where you were when I got on the first conversation with you. So.